everyone. Today is Thursday, June 11th, and joining me virtually is Senator Carla Begum and Representative Tony Jurgens. Thank you both for joining with me today. Um, I wanted to ask, with the shift from the stay at home order to the stay safe order that allows for more businesses to begin opening up, if you can fill us in a little bit on what the House has been focused on and working on during this time, Representative Jurgens. Most of my time has been spent dealing working with and talking to the business owners in the district to find out uh, what their specific challenges are and what we can do uh, to help with them. And with the governor's executive order, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot that we in the legislature can do, but we continually, and I'm sure Senator Bigham will say the same thing, we continually reach out to the uh, Department of Economic Development um, and or the governor's office to try to get clarifications, try to get loosening of, of some of the orders and and you know the time that we're that we're recording this is the second day after the the stay uh, safe order, and and many people were going out to bars and restaurants for the first time and actually being able to seat be seated inside. Uh, so I know that that was welcome news. Uh, the opening of uh, gyms and CrossFit centers that was welcome news as well. Uh, we uh, continue to to work in the in the right direction uh, as, with the with the reopening. Um, constantly monitoring the numbers uh, with the positive tests because we want to make sure that we're doing it safely. Uh, fortunately, we have not seen any recent spikes in numbers. The numbers seem to be going down, and, and we all hope that that uh, continues to be the case. Absolutely, I agree. Um, and I wanted to ask you um, as well, Senator Bigum, now that we're kind of moving more towards the stay safe order and businesses are opening up, has there been anything that the Senate also has kind of been like looking at when it comes to changes or overall how they product business or anything like that? Predominantly what I've been working on is staying in contact and listening uh, to the business owners and having weekly meetings with various business organizations and, and having communication with business owners. Uh, that has been to me the, the biggest um, uh, I guess benefit to um, having to um, deal with the pandemic is really having to be collaborative, working together, getting information out. And um, I was happy that I was able to get Commissioner Steve Grove from the Department of Employment and Economic Development um, to come to a chamber uh, call uh, with the, the Hastings Downtown Business Association and the Hastings Chamber to um, answer questions directly from the chamber uh, uh, members, I think that's very important. Um, I think getting information out about where testing's available, um, about the best practices, and how that information um, can benefit folks to keep them safe. And I think that um, continuing to have conversations with schools uh, in our local school districts about how the fall is gonna look um, for them going back to school. Um, one of the big pieces of legislation that uh, I've been working on has been with small business grants, micro grants um, for small businesses that were left out of the federal bill. Uh, S corps, LLCs, sole proprietors had a lot of difficulty um, accessing capital um, to stay afloat um, through the, the federal grant. And so we're gonna use some of the money that the federal government gave us to create our own grant program through the Department of Economic Development, which I think is beneficial. The other um, legislation I've been working on uh, is the federal money for state and local governments um, trying to, in a fair and equitable way, uh, getting that money dispersed to our communities, our counties, our townships. That's that's great update and definitely good to keep the conversation and dialogue going and making sure everyone kind of knows what's going on. So thank you both for that update there. And then uh, moving forward as well, tomorrow, June 12th, the Senate, as well as the House, are going to be going into a special session. So I wanted to also ask you, Senator Bigum, Bigum, can you fill us in on what is kind of being proposed or anything that's upcoming that people should take note of during that special session? Well, I'm always hopeful and waiting for the House to send over a robust bonding bill so that we can have some economic stimulation in, uh, in our local communities here. We have a lot of great projects that, uh, that are in that bill that hopefully will be coming over. Um, the House has to send it over to the Senate per the Constitution, so uh, I'm hopeful that that'll happen. Also, again, the CARES money um, for the local governments is something that I'm hopeful will pass uh, in the next day or two here. Um, additionally, the, gr the grant money um, for, the, uh, for the businesses, um, but also I'm hoping that the LCCMR money, which is the 
uh, constitutionally dedicated money from the lottery that goes to the environment. I'd like to see a standalone bill uh, on that. And also we need um, reform in our criminal justice system um, due to the uh, unjustified killing of uh, George Floyd. And so we need to um, take meaningful action uh, on that. And I'm, I'm hopeful that we will have a package of bills that have been thoroughly vetted already th through years um, of this discussion so that we can actually have meaningful action. But also there's going to be some um, proposals that are going to have to take a little bit more time. And so uh, I'm, I'm, those are the things that I'm hopeful in the next coming days and as we're into our, our first special session that uh, we'll be taking up and voting on. Absolutely. All very interesting movements ahead, that's for sure. Um, and I wanted to ask you from a House perspective, Representative Jurgens, kind of what you guys are going to be focusing on as while well, trying to get to the Senate. Senator Brigham has mentioned the, the CARES Act. There is a tentative agreement among the four leaders that will bring uh, these numbers could change, but the way it sits right now, about $31.7 million to uh, Washington County uh, for the CARES Act. So we're expecting or hoping that the uh, the four or the two bodies will uh, suspend the rules during the special session to take that up right away and get that passed because that's money that the counties, the townships, the cities are all been, they, they need this money, they've been waiting on it, it's sitting there waiting for them. Um, and so we're hoping that we can get that taken care of right away. Of course, the big thing is the bonding bill. I'm on the Capital Investment Committee. There have been uh, discussions uh, between the caucuses to get a, a bonding bill put together. Um, so we're always hopeful that that will happen. Um, I've been on, on, I don't know how many bonding trips around the state of Minnesota. I put in way too much time over the last two years to not get this bonding bill done. So um, as uh, the Senator mentioned, there's local projects in there, but even more than that, it's, it's a responsibility of the state of Minnesota um, all across the state, state buildings that the state owns, whether it's schools, whether it's through uh, the Public Facilities Authority for wastewater treatment plants, the state has responsibilities and these projects need to get done. They're not gonna get cheaper. If uh, for whatever reason, if a bonding bill doesn't happen this year, um, it's just gonna cost more money down the road. So I think we're all hopeful that the end result will be uh, a bonding bill. Um, we've seen those come together very quickly and we've also seen them fall apart at the end of the session. So uh, there are no guarantees, but, uh, but I would agree that that's something that I would like to see come out of um, before, before this is over with. Absolutely, I think that's one of the main things too that we guys discussed in the last update that the bonding bill is still here with everything else going on, that that is still a very important part of what's going on right now and your work behind the scenes and all of that. So I really appreciate your updates there. And I just wanted to see if Senator Bigham, if you would like to provide any more updates or anything else that you would like Minnesotans to know at this time. I think these are just very unprecedented times, but we need to be reminded that there were a lot of good things that did happen this past session. And I appreciate that you are giving us the opportunity here to talk about them. Uh, we finally were able to pass Insulin for All uh, and the Alex Smith um, uh, Insulin Affordability Act. Um, which allows uh, at a cap price insulin uh, for folks. And that's super important. We did, you know, a prescription drug reform that probably could have been a little bit more, had a little bit more teeth in it, but you know what? Um, we, we're going to keep working on it and pushing that for next year. But the um, Prescription Drug Transparency Act um, was a good start. Um, we'll keep moving on that. Um, and, uh, you know, I think continuing to talk about um, how we transition our economy into a green, clean energy um, society that, that actually stimulates the economy and creates jobs. And we, we passed some uh, renewable energy uh, grant money that um, really transitions not clean energy plants into clean energy plants um, as they shut down. Those types of things that really were good, good, good policy, good for Minnesota. And so, um, you know, I don't want people to forget that. And we're going to continue to push on that in these special sessions just to continue to build on that. And as we, you know, go on into the future and, and have to um, tackle some of these tough issues to remember that uh, it is possible to come to an agreement and make meaningful reform and take meaningful action. Absolutely. I appreciate you informing all Minnesotans that as well, that there's still so much that has been done and still working to be done as well. And I have a similar question for you, uh, Representative Jurgens. kind of what are you hoping for with the session, as well as what would you like Minnesotans to know? 
Well, you know, everything changed with the session. You, know, you go into a session with certain um, ideas, certain bills that you want to work on, certain legislation. And uh, so much of that got put on the back burner and some of it just completely off the burner as a result of uh, the COVID uh, response. And what I'm proud of as a body, as a legislative body, both the House and the Senate, how we figured out a way to get our job done, to continue to work, uh, to continue to hold our, our committee meetings, uh, engage the public. That's, a, that's a, a must when it comes to the committee hearings. You have to have give the, the public the ability to weigh in. Uh, and we did that. We, we were able to hold it. It took a little work and it was a little slower than usual and, and a little bit different, but uh, we were able to hold the committee meetings, uh, get input from the public, and we were able to hold our, uh, in our case, the House sessions. I sat right here in this office at home in this chair and voted on, on bills and amendments um, over the phone. And we'll do that. That's how we'll, we'll uh, work again in the special session. And I think that that is just a testament to the entire body. Uh, the legislative body that we were able to figure out a way to work um, a little bit differently, but we were still able to get the, the work of the people done to, for the most part. Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate you both taking the time to kind of update everyone here as well about what's been going on and what you, the work that you guys are continuing to do. So thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Elena. Yep. Have a good rest of your evening.